bloke Hamish, <laughs> who I've never met, emails me and says, come on my podcast to talk about being a dad. Sure, mate, I say, but what about I film a wacky adventure on the way to the studio with my daughter, so we've got something to talk about? Sure, he says, but what about I do the same with my kids and we meet halfway between your place and mine? Good thinking, I say. So I do the math and find a place 345 kilometres from each of us, which happens to be a lake. And on that lake is an island. How bloody perfect is that? This is the story of two blokes who have never met taking our kids on an adventure to do an inconvenient podcast. If you can't get to the island with this, well then, I think the podcast is off. I think I'm gonna call it the island Skull Island or Death Island or something like that, you know. Give it a, give it a little bit of gravity for the kids. <laughs> Why is it called Death Island? Uh, because if we get off this alive, kids, it's gonna be a bloody miracle. I'm gonna come from the south, he's gonna come from the north. We'll have a bit of an adventure to get to the shoreline. I'll be in a raft, he'll be in a canoe, and out we go and we meet and have ourselves a great time. I think he will be a very cool dude, but he might be not, and that's the risk. Me too, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fun on YouTube, but Helen may have married a dickhead, you know, and Hamish is about to meet a dickhead, I'm not sure. So that's the risk that we're both doing meeting on an island. So we've got a slightly longer drive because we're to go around the mountains uh, and I've got the youngest of the kids. He's got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, Sonny and Rudy. I've got May. Yeah, her first camping. Well, she's technically camped before. Oh, she has, yeah. But then that was we disaster. never did it again. So no, we were... this is the first time where it might actually be fun. Bye, May. See you, darling, see you, darling. And away we go. Welcome to the open road. Would you rather be a doctor, a lawyer, or an adventurer. Adventurer. Yo, that's a good answer. It turns out road tripping with a three and a half year old is mighty good fun. A little friend curious about things us old bastards have long forgotten were cool. Taking note of what May notices is a front row seat into the simple becoming complex. We travelled 300 kilometres to the edge of the mountains where May ate with a hybrid tool. A spoon and a fork in one. <laughs> and learnt some valuable lessons about finding money. Do we split the profits? If I find two dollars, I'll give you one dollar, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> I won't lie, after a disastrous camping trip with May two years earlier, I was deeply wounded. No, no. <laughs> Tonight, I figured, couldn't be worse. Hey, how was your sleep last night in the tent? It was good. You did good, didn't you? Did you roll on my side a lot? Yeah. Yeah, you did. You basically took up the entire tent, which is amazing for someone so small. I crawled up into the corner like a mongrel dog. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> in a little known city 700 kilometres from where I live is Hamish. With his blessing, Hamish had said, Bo, make me and the kids an adventure and we'll trust you with our lives. Already, I'm at a anxiety to excitement ratio of I'm sky high. I'm taking my children into the wilderness and I don't know where I'm going. As puppet master, I decided to communicate things via small boxes laden with shitty maps and weird clues. This is for us. How's the decoration too? Box number one. Oh, OK, hang on a sec. I think this is a map. Look, this is, this is Sydney. With a love of simplicity, I kept things high level. Head south, eat fruit, hydrate. Stop at five past the hour every hour. Leak as needed. Be at old, old Adam Inaby by 5 p.m. That's where we're going. P.S. You guys look good. In the box is licorice, mustard powder, energy gels, a self-help book for Hamish. He said it occurred to me, Hamish, you might be a good public speaker. Very kind of him. I might pursue a career in it. 
a book for each of the kids. And if you read that when you meet May, you can tell her what your favourite butterfly is. And offcuts from something I made that weren't spoons. Yeah. Do you know what these are, Sonny? Spoons. I don't know how deep into the bush we're going. I feel like this actually, this tiny thing is just, so I've got on camera my wife, like evidence that I, at one stage, cared about communications. You sync it with the phone, and then it should send text messages via satellite. I hear about this phone a lot. The one time I think it actually had a purpose because he was out in the back. I just hadn't synced it, honey. Yeah, he hadn't synced it properly. So he was out the back of the mountains in New Zealand and he hadn't actually set it up properly, making it completely futile. <laughs> so I did actually charge it yesterday and then I took it off charge yesterday. So proud of myself for doing it in advance. But I think I took it off charge and I left it on. Now it's dead again. Do you know what? I don't strap stuff down a lot. <laughs> I'm not, I don't do a lot of strapping. But this is my thinking, you know, you go through enough, do enough loops, more loops, more security, right? <laughs> it's pretty, mo it's moving around a fair bit. Thanks, honey. I'll text you on the sat phone. Love you, Mum! But we trust you, Dad. Trust you, Dad. Bye! Hey, Root. See the wagon on the roof? Can we, just, can we just keep an eye on it, on the gorilla cart? Just tell me if you see it wobbling at all. It shouldn't do. It's tied down very well, but just, just in case. May and I choose to drive the back roads, which is the shortest route and the longest travel time. This is a classic dad move. But it's where the inconvenience pays off. Even if only from the seat of a car, May is looking out over a big old landscape that can be filled with adventure. And that's why we're here, to get a taste of the world beyond the rolling green hills of home. All right guys, stop number one. Perfectly timed for dad to fill up. Um, you guys need to hop out and stretch your legs, that's the rules. You have to hop out. I know, well, you gotta hop out. Already seeing so much of Australia, it's really incredible. All good? Declined. Oh, dec declined. <laughs> Hi, honey. Yeah, you forgot Sonny's boots. Shit. I might come back. Well, Falcon is just here. Can I get him to run up to you? A lot of people wouldn't stop 40 minutes into a six hour journey for their second stop, but I really want to show the kids this amazing crab sculpture. Yeah. Also, we do need those boots. God, it's good to have a friend like Falcon. We need um, sticks for a little fire, don't we? Do you think Hamish is stopping to light a fire on the side of the road? I hope so. Mmm. Good. Cheers. Do you know what? I reckon he put all that stuff in the shoebox to cloud my mind, fill it up with books and the the things he made so I would forget something as critical as boots to force us to take extra stops to appreciate the environment. It's possible. This is, yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I knew I would be embarrassed eventually, sort of like in, sort of shown up to not be anywhere near it, like as capable as bow in the outdoors. I just wasn't expecting it within like the first, just during the commute to the bush. I thought I would be, I thought I'd have that. I thought I'd tick that box at least. And then, oh, spoke too soon. Here we go, here are the boots. Good to have a friend like Falk. Watch this, rolling stop. Thank you, Falk. Go, 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 go. Was that a two second pit stop? Got the boots, sunny boy. Here's the magnificent snowy river. It is awesome. 
You know, I've been eating all morning everything that May doesn't eat, I am eating. I've had her avocado sandwich, my avocado sandwich, lots of uh, fruit. I'm farting a lot in the car. May doesn't mind so much, she hasn't mentioned it yet. So, you know, I'm getting away with things. Things are good. Who wants celery? Who wants macos? scrape the side of someone's car. Okay guys, we're gonna be very quick. I'm just gonna leave these people a note. Rudy! That's <laughs> like, how, how did I do that? I wonder what Bo's doing for lunch. What? I'm just wondering what Bo might be doing for his lunch. I, he might be just cooking on the side of the road. You reckon he's just cooking, cooking something? Well, we're sort of, we're sort of getting our food from the side of the road too, if that's what he's doing. So, not too dissimilar. Hey, Miss Sunny, Rudy. It's five past one. I'm going to make a cup of tea with some sticks again. May's still sleeping. It's funny how that feels so much better than sitting in a freaking car too. They're just very. I'm exhausted from doing nothing. I suck at doing nothing. It's my biggest weakness. And I don't mean to be one of those wankers that say this during a, you know, an interview. What's your weakness? Oh, I'm a workaholic. I'm a perfectionist. I, try, I go above and beyond. <laughs> That's what people say. Shut up, bud. Just have a cup of tea, mate. We are making what my dad would term ferociously bad time. What's in front of me isn't helping. I mean, I hate to generalise, but when you see a Corolla with two straw hats in the back, that is an enemy. I have no idea what this place is, but I'm almost positive it's not the ocean. And we've got a uh, echidna on the road. How about that, Dale? Every time it's five past the hour, something interesting happens. Rubbish. Who would want us to pick that up? Surely Bo. Look at the lake, Dale, there it is. There's our lake. Welcome to <laughs> Bramer Bay. Look at that, they've painted the tank like it's made out of rocks. It's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> oh. This could be awesome. Oh, Collie, Daddy, something to fix already. Hey guys, we made it. Step one, complete. What are you doing? Just checking that my survival bracelet still works. What is this? Is this it? What? This is something, something. from Bo. Oh my God, he's, this is, he's really gone to a lot of effort. Well done Team Blake. The wheelbarrow and the dry bags are tools for glory. So the big question of everyone's lips is, where the heck are we going tomorrow? In summary, a wheelbarrow will carry the Blake family equipment, the kids and snacks in a westerly direction until they find something worth finding. I should also mention, big blue bag contains lots of stuff that you might need, want or desire, usually at your leisure. Oh, right, he's really like, all right, we got straps, a potato. This is a ukulele. There is a lot of wetsuit gear. We're going on the water. All my packing for hiking and um, dragging a wagon. I don't think that's what we're doing. Finally, us dads and our kids made it to opposite sides of the lake. Things were about to get real. But first, we needed to take care of business. Hello, May. Hi. Should we have a, um, should we have a shower? No. So he doesn't know about the canoeing yet, but I'd say he knows that there's some sort of water component coming up. We have our water craft with us. He does not. He's going to have a canoe on the shoreline when he gets there. See you, little house. Bye-bye. Oh. Away we go. Finally, on the southern side of the lake, a dad and his awesome little friend get the hell out of a tin can and hit the road under their own steam. 
Is this like first class travel? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. I don't know about you kid, but I am excited. Well, I hope Hamish and the kids are very excited too. As I went through the stuff last night, like I was like, all right, actually, let's think about this. Like it's, it's unlikely he's gonna have left like random stuff. There's like one glove, there's like a pack of car fuses. So it's either highly cryptic or I kind of get the impression he's just throwing a bunch of shit in there to confuse me. <laughs> but I am bringing the potato. You better believe we're bringing the potato. The kids have named it Gerald and Gerald will be coming with us. <sighs> you know what we need? A compass. Okay, can you keep it in your pocket? Because look at our first instruction. West. Follow the lake edge. Which way is west? So if that's north, Not east, south, west. No. that's that way. Hey, Dad. Is that correct? Daddy. Hmm. <laughs> it's a couple of wests. I'm gonna be able to scratch the back of my knees without bending over by the end of this trip. Frickin' arms are getting longer. Look at that! Hey, there's the Islander. Well, let's get beyond this tree, I'll show you. Can you see the island? <laughs> That's where Hamish and the kids are gonna be. They, at the moment, they're over on that other headland over there with a wheelbarrow having their own adventure. Not a prob. Yep, just setting up the old sat. Hi, honey. This is the sat phone, as per usual. Yeah, it's not quick. It's obviously more for like sort of casual emergencies that unfold slowly. <laughs> Bo's close. Rue, look at this. Still plenty of room for you. And will I get food there? I'll have a, I'm gonna have a little pink bag with snacks. I've already saw that. What's that? I've already saw that. That's full of snacks. All the snacks. And then there's other snacks as well in other bags. How about this? The more walking you do, the more snacks you can earn. How's that? How's that fair? Yeah. Hey, Rue, you let us know if you feel like walking. jumping out and walking. Daddy, did you did you bring um um? I know what you mean, the potato. So two handsome dads with wheelbarrows full of kids make their way towards a mythical island I'd seen on Google. Look at us and our awesome setups, sophisticated, well oiled. An expedition similar to a moon landing? Nah, we were two dads with shit setups getting stress injuries due to poor design. No biggie, we were moving in the right direction and our kids had no idea how crap things were. Rope up the wagon. All right, here we go. First test. Oh, jeez. Yep, you notice it. Go wash it. <laughs> oh, thanks, sunny boy. I think for this steepness of hill. You got it? Sunny's come up with a great plan. Let's drive the wagon to my back. He pushes the wagon. Rudy's gonna walk. Oh, Sunny wagon's rolling away. Sunny. <laughs> Great job, Sunny boy. I genuinely don't know what I would have done. Um, I still stand by the fact that it's logistically the fairest distance, but uh, yeah, we we knew there'd be some inconvenience, and we found it. I think it's safe to say we found it. Oh, this is steep. Push up the hill. Whoa. Yeah, push up the hill. 
Good job, good job, good job, good job. Four, four, three, two, one, zero. We're up. Look, there's an animal bone. Oh yeah, shall we get that? Shall I get it for you? Yeah. Is it broken? It's all broken. Yeah, that's a hip bone. Hey, what are you going to play games with uh, Rudy? Yeah. That'd be fun. I've heard she's very cool. I love her. Do you love her? That's good. That's a good start. Well, funny, Hamish, I've never met Hamish, right? And it feels like we've been dating for months and yet we've never met. How good a wheelbarrow is. I love the wheel. Heck of an invention. It's okay, Rue. You just wait at the top, honey. Must get to podcast. Hey, look at look at all this. Look at all this. What's that's, that? That's all the years of growth. Isn't that beautiful? The thing with being a dad is that we're flying blind, often trying to figure out the point to life. I know I am, and I suspect Hamish has some bigger questions as well. The beauty of all this is that our kids aren't too fussed about knowing what we don't know, and in fact help us squash our adult questions because they're more often than not wondering about what kind of snack they'll have next. Okay, come here guys, who wants M&Ms? Rudy Bear, you earned those M&Ms, you flew up that hill mate, well done. You zoomed up, you're the champion, you won the hill. The bone's talking. Is it? Hello. Hello, bone. You got your, got your sheep hip bone, your sheep hip bone. Make sure you take your sheep hip bone. Sheep hip bone, a sheep hip bone, a sheep. <laughs> what do you think? Good. It's fantastic, isn't it? And there's our island. Roll the top down and pull down, push down. Whoa. And it's going into the walls. Yay. Is that, is that gonna be okay? Yeah. Is that comfy? Yeah, it's very comfy. And then there's Halfway Island, halfway between his house and mine. Unbelievable. You okay, darling? Stay nice and still. And away we go. In the boat? Are we in the boat? No, are you in the boat? Yeah, yeah, I'm paddling you. After a week of May wearing a buoyancy vest to bed, setting up practice tents, packing, two days in the car and a day in the wheelbarrow, we were finally within Kui of Halfway Island. We couldn't wait to be here. Over there, love. Oh, yeah. oh, give us the foot there. That's where the others are coming from. I can't see them. No, neither can I. Maybe they're separate. Well, it's getting narrow, like we've got to be, the land's got to be running out soon. Yeah. Do you see something? Do you see something, Zanny boy? <laughs> Oh wow, you reckon that's Bo's paddle? Yeah. And the convenience remains low. Hamish and the kids find a canoe with logie detail, an orange bag full of kit and a paddle I'd made for him. This is the mile an hour paddle. I didn't finish it during the film itself. It's been sitting in the barn. I thought I'll finish it for Hamish. What does it say? H HB like the pencil. Oh, mate. That's beautiful. Bo. Oh my god. Veg. Veg. Oh. Yes! <laughs> okay. okay, slow down. See an island? Closest. Paddle to it. I mean, is that I think that is the island, isn't it? Because I feel like that's, unless that's the headland. Oh, is that the island? Yeah, that's the island. Yeah, that's the island. Let's actually double check because we're pointing at two very different things. Hands up, who reckons that's the island? Who reckons that's the island? 
Well, got to go with the kids' instincts. Yeah, I mean, they're like high five and chocolate, life jackets. Like, we've solved the riddle. And that is great. We've sort of solved Bo's clues. But it's like, this, you know, as a dad, like, oh, I've got to put these kids and all this gear in a canoe and then accurately sort of navigate them across. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, there's definite nerfs. God, I bloody look the part, don't I? Um, he left three gloves. Further confirming my suspicions that he was just chucking any old shit he could find in the bags. <laughs> Having never canoed before, just instinctively, I can tell that the number one rule is don't push the boat out too hard and just send your children into the middle of the lake without you in there. Yes. I'm getting in. Oh. Draped in the gear I'd been wearing for decades, Hamish looked eerily like a bloke I knew very well. Can I be honest with you? I really feel like Bo. Mostly it's the hat. This trip is about the beauty of made-up adventures with your kids. Not always knowing where you're going, earning your snacks and having bucket loads of fun. As a parent, we're the great enabler of such experiences and without fail, they make our own lives a whole lot better. How lucky are we that Bo went to all this effort, provided all this gear to give us such a cool adventure. As May and I waited for our unmet friends, we suspected we'd picked right. A good dad and good kids to spend time with on an island. Ahoy! 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 <laughs> what a boat full of goodness. Hello, Sonny. Hello, Rudy. Pleased to meet you. There's May. Hi, May. Yay! You're coming. How fun. Oh, look, Dad's taking you through the real, he's navigating through the brush. <laughs> look at this, guys. <laughs> Pro arrival. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. Hello, team. Hello, Hi. Mr. Sonny. Pleased to meet you. Hello, love. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Hi, mate. legend. Big love. Hello. How are you, mate? How are you? Great to see you. This I is awesome. Like I know you, but I, I don't know. know you. After three months of flirting online, messages, sending appropriate pictures via text and looking at maps, the reality of island life finally took over. And it was good. It was bloody good. There was now just one thing left to do. Um, Bo Miles, welcome to Other Dad's Dad. Usually we're on a couch or in an Airbnb somewhere. We're on an island in the middle of a lake here in the snowy mountains. Yep in geographically the fairest yes. location. So I didn't have to come to you, you didn't have to come to me. Yep. Um, but in doing that, it's also become, I think, the world's most inconvenient podcast. Absolutely, yeah. Who, who does inconvenient things? No one does it, right? And that's where the gold lies. <laughs> well, mate, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Anne.